first, welcome back to another episode of Zola Tank Boys. In this episode, guys, we're gonna clean some zoanthids. We're gonna save a diamond gold, we get them nice and fat. Let's go. All right, Reefer, so this is definitely an impromptu video. If you guys keep up with Zola Tank Boys, we dropped the video yesterday about putting this bad boy up back there, building that lid. And this morning I woke up and I was like, man, I really got to clean some of my Zoas and kind of get some reef work done. And I figured I would bring you guys along for the journey. Um, by no means is this like a how-to video. This is me getting in there and cleaning off some of the Zoas that um, I think were struggling a little bit. In my office, I had my diamond goby. He was looking kind of thin because that tank isn't as mature as the other tanks. So I definitely want to get him in this display behind me. Don't forget the easiest way to support this channel. Like, subscribe, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Let's go. All right, guys. Move back to the sun. So here I have the Zoas in tank water. And then here I have regular water, uh, tank water, but there's no Zoas in here. All right, guys. So I'm going to use Coral RX. Zoanthids are one of the most beautiful corals, however, they are one of the dirtiest. So if you're not dusting your zoanthids frequently, they will be full of detritus. Um, not just that, but um, they're known to have tons of pests. So in the instructions, it says, add four catfuls per gallon. This is definitely not a gallon. This is literally like half a bowl. So I'm gonna grab more water. Actually, I did grab a whole bunch of extra water here. All right. So I'm gonna grab more water um, to fill this up a little bit more. Dude, I already see gunk everywhere. So this might be why those zoanthids weren't doing too well. Now mind you guys, I did add some, add some rasses to the tank. So that should also help this whole thing. So let me grab some more water. Awesome. So the goal here is to add the Core RX to the solution and Use this turkey baster to kind of swish it around to make sure I get in all the crevices. And I dust my zoanthids frequently. All right, I'm gonna start with one capful. Again, guys, this is how I do it. Everybody can feel free to do it whichever way they feel comfortable. It's gonna be a milky kind of substance. I'm gonna switch it. It smells kind of like pine salt. So. Swish it around. And in the back, if you read the back, it says it removes flatworms, removes zoanthid eating bugs, um, nudies, bristle worms, zoanthid eating spiders, it eats a lot. So, all right, so let's start out with the money shots because this is the one that I'm really worried about because this is a super expensive Zoa. So we're gonna put it in there. It says five to 10 minutes, Alexa. Set a 10 minute timer. All right guys, so what I'm gonna do, like I said, I'm gonna try to get this as good as possible. I like to stop. I'm just gonna literally dust around it. Because I really wanna get anything that's in here. No, Alexa's not a good listener today. Oh yeah, guys, there's tons of stuff coming out of here. Alexa, set a 10 minute timer. First, I was only gonna do just two zoanthids, and then I remembered I had the huge colony. So, yeah, there's tons of stuff coming out of here, guys. That's why it's good to dip your corals. Also, having wrasses will also um, help because wrasses eat a lot of the pests. And for a while, I had my yellow wrasse that would take care of everything, but he jumped. Guys, that water's so gunky. I'm gonna get you guys a close-up in a second, but it's super, super gunky. But for a while, guys, I had my yellow cores rasp that would do a lot of the damage, right? It would go in there, it would clean up, and he jumped, and for a while, I didn't have anything. And for some reason, my mystery rasp is always hiding. We're gonna let that one sit there nicely, 
And we're gonna move on to, I'm honestly gonna have to get another bowl with some more water because this colony is so big that it's pretty much taken up most of that bowl. But yeah guys, we're gonna let this guy sit for a little bit. Actually, I think I can knock out maybe one or two more um, polyps, uh, colonies. So now we're doing the candy apple reds or Bowsers. So let me get in here, show you guys. If this is your first time messing with some of um, you want to get eyewear. I don't wear eyewear because I do everything wrong, but yeah, guys, you want to get some eye protection just in case. But yeah, guys, we want to do kind of like a washing machine method to get in there. But yeah, guys, I mean, you can already see so much stuff coming out. Now, so we're going to do one capful again. Keyboard Warriors is how I do it. Don't get all emotional if I use the wrong terminology. All right, switch it around. Now we're going back in. Here we have four frags. And again, we have some high-end frags in here. I mean, we have um, Miami Vices, Space Chaos, which I know are expensive. Purple Heart, a decent colony of Purple Hearts. Guys, these, guys, I'm gonna show you guys this water. It's so nasty. But this is how you clean your zoanthids. You get in there and you just make sure all the bugs come off. Now on these guys, I will be honest, other than maybe, oh, I see. Yep. Bugs. Well, what looks like a a bug. But on these, you know, isn't is, there's not that much detritus because I dust these frequently. So this is what I'm doing because I want to. Now some people get a power head, a huge bucket. More power to you. I'm not gonna do that. This method has always worked for me. This side is super dirty, this one for sure. This one, other than probably some bugs that I know are pests that are gonna be in here, it's not gonna be that dirty because I dust this frequently. So, and it's gonna be a little messy because you're, I mean, you're splishy splashing, right? So, I'm gonna let these guys sit for a little bit. And then we're gonna do fresh, clean water. Dip um, with salt water from your tank, but you wanna get off all this um, medicine because you don't want this in your tank. So, give me a couple minutes, I'm gonna get to this, and then we'll see what everything looks like. This water is the one where I had the main frags that were on my display. Notice it's not that dirty. There is dirt, but it's not as bad as this one. This looks like gunk, and this was on my frag rack, and that's one of my reasons why you gotta dust your Zoas, because you don't know what could be on there, guys. And now we're just cleaning them. So, honestly, some people don't like to be too rough on them. I just try to get in there as much as I can. So, even with me holding the camera, I'm not getting in as good as I like to get in. But that's why having rasses, cleaner crew, um, cleaner shrimps really does help because it assists you with this process. But zoanthids, guys, if they're not opening up, dust them. If they're still not opening up and all and your parameters are checked out and everything looks good, dip them because they probably got a pest on them. So what I'm gonna do, guys, is I'm gonna finish here, then I'm gonna put them back in the display and hopefully they'll open up. But let's, um, let's hope this does the job. Now it's time to glue these frags back into the system. So this is my glue of preference, it's like a gel. Um, all you have to do is work it into the reef a little bit. So all I'm gonna do is add some to the back and get this back into the tank. Put a nice little dollop. 
that looks good to me. I'm gonna wet it a little bit. We're also gonna do the same thing with the candy apple reds. A nice little doll up there. All right guys, so let me put this in. All right guys, we're gonna try to put this exactly where it was which was right over here. All right, that looks pretty good. I'll just put the rest of the frags back in. All right guys, so this frag is in. Look how clean that is. So rest assured, if there were any pests on that, that's gonna be, you know, they're pretty much gone. And then you got these guys here. I mean, literally, I don't know if the video can capture it because I'm using my iPhone, but it, they're like white, which is good. Not white, but it's like spotless. So hopefully that does the job and I'm gonna get the rest of the frags put in nicely that way. Um, yeah, hopefully we get everything back to normal. Here's a little bit of the aftermath so you can see how dirty some anthids could be. This was the water from the Zoas in my display. This was from the frag wreck, so obviously huge difference. And this was even after I cleaned them. So Zoas are super dirty, dust them, clean them. If they're not opening up, dip them, because they probably got some pests in them. I mean, just from looking quickly, I see Asterina stars, there's probably some crap, some worms and stuff in there. So, and there is a loose polyp. So I'm gonna have to pick that up and frag it. I believe that's a candy apple red frag. So I actually got two frags. I got a little red ditchy frag that was in my frag rig that I don't know how the heck it was like just floating there. So a little red digi and a candy apple red. So we're gonna put them on the frag rack, dust the frag rack off um, and clean this whole mess up. On to another note. Here we have the Red C170. As you can see, if you watched yesterday's video, we did remove the two large, the shoulder tank and the fox face, but there is one more little guy I want to remove from here, and that's actually the diamond goby, which is actually hiding right now somewhere in here. So I want to remove them and put them in my living room because this tank, it's unfortunately so clean that he looks like he's starving, and I feed this tank aggressively, guys. Um, and I don't, want him, I don't want anything bad to happen to him because he is one of my favorite fish. So I do need to remove him and put him in the living room because that tank is older, has more nutrients, and is, you know, it's more established. So let's see how I can do this. I'm gonna try my best to record this, but this might be a tough one. So he's actually hiding back here. I just saw him. Yeah, there he is. He's right there. And he kind of knows what's up. So let me try to catch him, put him in the living room, so then he can kind of start eating and get fat. All right guys, so you won't believe this. Caught him with one swoop. Now the goal is to not let him get out. Whoa, almost fell. So here he is guys. So let's put him in the living room so he can actually eat, be happy and fat. So the lid is still on. Whoa, calm down buddy. Got you here. Let's take him over here. There'll be tons for you to eat, man. Again, guys, it's just me today, so let's try to lift this up with one hand. Put him in here. Come on, buddy. Go in. There we go. Now, hopefully, you can thicken up, boy. Thick. Get him thick, boy. Now remember, there is a blue spotted jawfish, but he was with a blue spotted jawfish in the in the other office, and he had no problem. Again, guys, I don't have the blue filter on. Um, so let's give him a couple minutes. I think the camera's even upside down, but this was crazy. All right, Reed First, I hope you guys enjoyed this week's episode of Zola Tank Boys. Don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Follow us on Instagram. Buy a shirt. Till next time, Zola Tank Boys out.